Hi, my name is Tom Yolman. I'm a photographer here in southwestern Ohio. And for a living, I do a lot of pictures of uh, people in their offices and people playing baseball. Uh, but what I really love doing and what is a true passion is uh, wildlife photography and birds in particular. I've got a lot of photographer friends of mine that ask me, uh, how do you go about getting good, good bird pictures? and uh, how they can do it without having to have uh, $12,000 lenses. Uh, so this is what I tell them. One of the first things is the equipment. And what I use is this uh, Canon 300 millimeter F4 lens. Um, it's relatively inexpensive at about uh, $1,100, $1,200. Uh, it's lightweight and you can take this lens on an airplane. You can. Uh, go a lot of places with it, where as uh, a 600 f4 or a 400 2.8, uh, you can't really do a whole lot with them. It's if you have one or if you've ever used one, you can't really walk very far. You can't carry them more than a couple hundred yards. But uh, with this lens, um, it's inexpensive, like I said, and it's something that um, you can actually take really good pictures with. I use a Canon 60D uh, camera body. Again, it's relatively inexpensive. I bought this one for about $700. And uh, it's uh, 18 megapixel and it does incredible pictures. And uh, quite often I use this uh, 1.4 teleconverter, which runs about $250 and uh, gives me a little more magnification. So that's what I use to shoot the birds with. Now, uh, all around me, there's birds all in the trees, they're flying everywhere. The question is, how do you get close enough to get a good bird picture? So my trick is, is not to go out hunting the birds and try to get close to them, but bring them close to me. Uh, and what I do to get pictures uh, like this in this magazine that I shot a few years ago of a beautiful uh, prothonotary warbler in a uh, red flowering redbud branch. Um, what I do is I put out food to get the birds uh, to come to me. Uh, and then it's a win-win situation. The bird gets a meal and I get a good picture. Uh, so the first thing I'll talk about here, let me get rid of this, is uh, the kinds of bird food that you might use to bring in a lot of different species and this will work uh, just about anywhere you're at whether you're on the east coast the west coast or along the mississippi um, one of the main kinds of food is uh, black oil sunflower seed which is this and most birds uh, seed eating birds will eat this and uh, a lot of the colorful birds like the cardinals and um, gross beaks and all these beautiful calendar birds that you see will come in happily for the black oil sunflower seed. Uh, other kinds of food are things like uh, suet, which is uh, uh, a beef fat, and you can buy these suet cakes like this at just about any store, um, any department store, uh, any uh, hardware store. They sell these for bird feeding. They cost about a buck a piece. And these are used to attract things like uh, woodpeckers, um, chickadees, bluebirds, a lot of stuff eats this suit. It's a high fat um, food and the birds just go nuts over it. And these are, you buy these little cage feeders uh, and they just, you can hang them up by strings or wires. And uh, we'll talk about where to hang them next. Uh, another kind of, uh, food to bring in really interesting birds are hummingbirds and the, the food is uh, a sugar water nectar that you put in these colorful feeders. I just bought this at a um, hardware store for about 10 bucks and uh, the hummingbirds, you'll have hummingbirds all summer if you fill this up with sugar water or this um, red colored nectar that has a, a preservative in it um, that you can also buy where you buy the feeders. Uh, so if you enjoy doing hummingbirds, and we'll talk about this later, um, these feeders are great. They're inexpensive. The, the uh, sugar water, the nectar that you can buy is inexpensive, and uh, you'll be able to get great hummingbird shots all summer long. 
So the next thing is how do you get the birds to come where you want them? Well, what I have here, I've built kind of a little set here in my backyard and I uh, just live in a normal house. I don't have anything, any uh, special yard here and I'll do a little yard tour later on to show you that uh, um, it's not, uh, I don't live in the mountains or have any uh, uh, anything special. But what I've done is I've built a little set here um, with some interesting perches uh, in it as places to get neat pictures of birds. Uh, back in the old days, you could just get a picture of a bird on a branch and uh, that was good enough. Um, not many people were shooting birds and just having a close up picture of a bird was really something. But now um, uh, you can get much more attractive bird pictures by kind of going out and finding interesting perches and interesting things for the birds to sit on. For example, up here I've cut a um, uh, red bud branch with a beautiful uh, pinkish purple blossoms. Um, I've just used an old pop bottle here uh, for water so the plants don't wilt and I've clamped it on to a um, plant stand that you buy at a hardware store. Um, here I've got a really interesting uh, sculpted rock that I pulled out of a river. Uh, both of them are really interesting places to have birds. They, uh, and this here is, a, uh, is an old log that I found along the river that's got really interesting wood patterns, the same with this. And so the trick is, is to put food out where you want the birds to land. And that's probably the, the key to the entire uh, bird shooting uh, system is to put food out where you want birds to land. So for example, if I want the birds to land on this sculpted rock, I'm going to put this food right inside the little uh, nooks and crannies of the rock and the birds will land right here on this interesting part of the rock to get the food. Uh, if I'm not using this rock, I'll put the food in a little patch right here so that the birds have to land on this uh, flowering branch to get the food. They'll, they'll usually come in, land there, and then drop down to pick out the food. So that's the key, is to put food out um, where you want birds to land. Now one of the things that you can do that which will really save you a lot of time is to get a feeding station started, is to get, um, is to have bird feed out all the time. I've got a big pile of uh, limestone rocks here that I use as a bird feeder, and I pretty much have bird seed out uh, all year long every day. So uh, whenever I do put seed out, the birds actually see me come out and fill up the trees waiting for their, for their breakfast. So getting a good feeding station started and getting a, a good pool of birds in your yard is really important. Um, if you just put food out, uh, it could take days for the birds to find it and start coming in. Um, but after you have a good feeding station started, you'll have a uh, a good pool of 15 or 20 species of birds um, at your command at all times. Um, it's easier to feed birds in the winter. They're hungrier. Uh, the, the cold makes them hungrier and the birds come in and are much tamer and uh, spend much more time at your feeder. Uh, the summer months you'll still get good bird pictures and of course that's when you get the good uh, flowering branches but it takes a lot longer for the birds to come in. There's a lot of insects in the forest, uh, a lot more things for them to eat out in the wild. So you'll have to wait a little longer. Uh, and that's about it. So we're gonna go through and, um, and uh, check out some of the uh, birds coming in here. So it's also very important to create habitat uh, in your backyard that's good for wildlife. Um, in this case, we had a pool here when we first moved in and I took out the above ground pool and put in a pond, which has been really beneficial uh, for birds. Uh, in the summertime when it's really dry, they really uh, come in here and I'm able to get really nice pictures uh, of birds right next to the water. Uh, quite often I'll put food uh, next to one of these logs or one of these rocks and get really interesting pictures of birds, uh, reflections in the water as they drink, and uh, I've got some shallow rocks in here um, that birds can get in and splash around and cool off and bathe in the summer. Uh, it, 
Now I live in a relatively uh, large woodland, but even if you have a small apartment or backyard, you can create a habitat that's really good for birds and other wildlife. Uh, just to show you as I pan here, I've got lots of flowers planted. Um, I've got this redbud tree here, which uh, is a great source of a flowering branch for shooting birds on. Um, I've got nest boxes set up for the chickadees and Carolina wrens, which are really fun birds to shoot. So I've tried to create something here that will attract a maximum number of species. Uh, there's a lot of birds flying around these woods and in these fields. It's just a trick of getting them to land somewhere where I can shoot a nice picture. So this is the corner of my backyard that I've decided to put in this bird shooting set. Um, I've got the feeders set up to attract the birds and here in this corner of the yard I can leave everything set up. It's not in anybody's way and I could shoot birds any time of the day. Uh, here I've got a nice sculpted rock for birds to land on with food on it. Uh, the redbud branch with the pretty flowers to get birds to land on. And with this particular area, I've got a lot of options to set up multiple sets and put food in multiple places. Uh, there's a nice rock pile here that gives really good backgrounds. I've got logs uh, laying down that I can put uh, food on and get the birds to land there. I've got uh, lots of interesting trees and grass, moss-covered rocks that I can uh, put food out on and the birds will go right into it. Uh, I can move down here by the pond, put food down there, and have the birds land exactly where I want them by putting food in little piles next to the interesting rocks. Now to shoot the birds in these different places, I have this hunting blind here that I bought at a sporting goods store for about $70. I could move this blind anywhere, sit in it, and um, get pictures of the birds anywhere in the yard. Uh, this blind gets pretty hot in the summer and pretty cold in the winter. So I've also got this option. This is my living room window where I can sit in in relative comfort and uh, shoot birds from out the window. I've got my feeder set up about 30 feet from the window, which uh, is good. Uh, it's a good distance to uh, not spook the birds. And uh, with my 300 millimeter lens with the 1.4 teleconverter, I've got nice blurry out of focus backgrounds. Like I said, it's out of the way. It's not bothering anybody. So I can leave it set up. I've got bird photographer friends who have their entire yard set up with light stands and all kinds of different logs and um, sets. And it's, it's really hard to actually have a normal backyard if you do that. So I've got flowers planted here. Um, at any point I can plant more flowers, put food down and have the birds land right in the flowers that I want. So this is the setup I'm going to use to photograph birds from out of the window of our living room. I've got the tripod set up next to the couch and I've got the window cracked open just enough for the lens to see out to my set and I've got the shades drawn on most of the window because if the birds see any movement in the room at all they'll all take off. So I've got the window cracked open just enough to see out and not let in the super cold air or super hot air and there's my set out there and I've got a squirrel on it now. As soon as I scare him off I will uh, get back to shooting birds. So I'm shooting all this today on my Canon 300mm f4 lens with a Canon 60D camera body. Now the Canon 60D has a crop factor of about 1.6 because the chip is smaller than a full frame piece of film. So that turns my 300mm lens into about a 480. Now I'm not using my teleconverter now, my 1.4x teleconverter because my my set is only about 20 feet from the, my uh, window here where I'm shooting from inside my living room. So I don't really need 
the 1.4x if I wanted to I could put that on and get some really close-up shots uh, other places that I move this set out in the yard when I use the hunting blind I will put the teleconverter on if I want to get uh, really close-up shots so I'm also in shade today I actually like shooting in the shade a lot better because you don't have to deal with these deep deep shadows that you get when you're in full sun now my shutter speeds are trying to st I'm trying to keep them pretty fast um, the, as you can see this squirrel is moving relatively quickly and anything below uh, six six hundredth of a second you're gonna get motion blur I also want to keep my shutter speeds fast so that I can use a uh, a large aperture at f4 to keep the background uh, blurring out of focus with a smaller aperture like at f8 my background becomes more in focus and becomes more distracting the birds are not as isolated the background of your set is also incredibly important it can either make or break a picture and in this scene I'm not sure if I like the background behind my rock uh, I've got a log back there but it's kinda half green and half brown I think I may go out and move um, the log that's in the background up so that I get a nice dark blurry out of focus shape back there that really highlight the birds um, on my branch, my redbud branch, uh, it's not too bad. I've got some yellow flowers back there to add some color. Um, the pink flowers are really stand out against the green so that when a bird lands on it, I get a really uh, interesting picture. Uh, and the yellow flowers in the background just kind of accent the uh, color of the bird and the color of the flowers it it uh, it I don't find it too distracting if it was more in focus it would be more distracting but being kind of blurry like that uh, just adds some nice color to the background and those flowers are in my field back there however if you wanted more color in the background you could actually plant flowers back there um, they don't have to be native they could be anything you buy at the store and you could actually um, have those 20 feet behind there to add a lot more color to it the same way with this log I like the wood I like the darkness of it but you could put some tulips back there or or something like that some roses to really add to the uh, overall color scheme of your scene So getting the bird to land on just the right place is really tricky. I've moved the food around so that it is in the nooks and crannies of this rock. And that's one of the only places the birds can go to get a mouthful of seed. So the bird gets fed, I get a good picture and everybody's happy. So if I spread the food out too much, I'd have to wait quite a long time for the bird to get on the rock. As you can see, the cardinals now move down to the flat part of the rock, which is not the most desirable uh, part of the photo. It's just kind of an ugly gray rock. Now, I've put a little too much food in the nooks and crannies. You don't really want the food to show, but I've kind of overfilled it just to be able to see um, where the food goes and to show where the bird is going to end up being. So this cardinal is giving a really good photo op. He's sitting there for a long time. Usually cardinals are a little bit jumpy and skitzy. Uh, but this bird is giving us plenty of opportunity uh, to get really nice pictures. Behind him a chickadee has just flown into the scene. But with this rock being so small, it's one at a time. So here I've moved a log into the background of my sculpted rock. Um, the, the split scene of the log behind with the green of the plants was kind of bothering me, so I've 
uh, moved it in the back to kind of give it a more even look and to help the bird to stand out more. I've also removed some of the seed from the rock. Uh, it was looking pretty messy there. And I didn't like the idea of uh, being able to see my bait, the bird seed. And I guess you could clean it up in Photoshop, but I'm not one for sitting um, at a computer for long amounts of time, cloning out uh, little pieces of seed. So I thought it best just to uh, remove the seed um, from the rock without using the computer. So the scene in the background is a lot more even. The bird stands out more without all that distracting uh, green lines of the grass and the plants. Um, and I've moved the log far enough back so that it's uh, out of focus if I use a shallow depth of field. Now you can change the background up as much as you want. You could put flowers back there, probably further back than the log is. The log's only about four feet behind the rock, uh, but you could put flowers way in the background and get some nice color going. You could put more wood back there um, to give it uh, more of a woodsy look. Uh, so there's a lot you can do just by changing the set just a little bit. Uh, so what happens if you don't have a backyard, uh, if you live in an apartment or your backyard just uh, it's not really good for shooting. Well, what I've done quite often uh, when I lived in an apartment and um, couldn't shoot birds out my third story window uh, is I found places along roadsides and in parks where I could put food out and get birds coming to that area and then I would sit in my car and use the car as a blind and I would shoot out the window. And uh, there's a couple of places that um, I had found along a roadside where there were some really interesting tree stumps um, that made really good bird shooting locations uh, that were probably 30 or 40 feet from a pull-off and I was able just to go there on an almost daily basis since it was close to my house, uh, close to my apartment, and put food out and get a good bird following there and I could pull in and put food out at that particular location and have birds there within 10 minutes um, and I got a lot of really interesting pictures there. Uh, there's also a lot of places to go around the country to shoot birds. Uh, there's a place in northern Ohio called uh, McGee Marsh uh, where all the mig migrating birds are about to fly over Lake Erie and they get stuck in this one little park along the lake shore and it's an amazing place to go and even with the 300 millimeter lens and get really good close-up bird shots. Um, that place also has huge amounts of bird watchers because the amount of bird life there is really impressive. Um, national parks are a great place to shoot wildlife. Animals are quite often tame uh, and you can get incredible pictures at places like Glacier National Park where uh, mountain goats and bighorn sheep and grizzly bears are uh, 20 feet away from you. Uh, quite often with some of these animals you're backing up because the animals are so tame that um, you don't want to be that close to them, especially a bear. Uh, there's a lot of interesting places to shoot uh, birds uh, uh, around the country. Uh, res um, parks and uh, preserves where there are large flocks of sandhill cranes gather. Um, huge uh, snow, ge snow geese uh, like Bosca del Apache in um, New Mexico is an incredible place to shoot birds. Um, places in New York City, uh, Jamaica Bay, and uh, it's a famous place that uh, people go to shoot water birds. Uh, so there's a lot of places around to shoot. If you don't have a, something like a backyard to shoot in, um, there's a lot of places you can go and do really interesting wildlife photography and um, places that you can make pictures to be proud of. So I've got some examples here of photos that I've taken over the years and I'm going to talk about how I made them. In these pictures I found a pull-off along a road near a park started putting bird seed out and within a few weeks I had a number of different species coming to this interesting log. I could pull up and put out bird seed and uh, sit in my car, use that as a blind and have plenty of birds there whenever I wanted. 
Now here's some examples of our set where we put the food beneath the flowering branch and got the birds to come and sit in the flowers. With these bluebirds it's a little different. You put out mealworms in a little cup but you put them in the same place and the bluebirds will come and sit on whatever you put next to the mealworms. In this case a uh, branch with sumac berries. Uh, we also used a, uh, an antler and had the birds sitting on an antler. We put the mealworms right beneath it and they came in and sat right on it. So with the backyard pond, you don't have to have a large pond, just a small water feature, just enough for the birds to get in and bathe and drink. And you put your food next to it and the birds will come in and get your seed, but they'll also jump in the water and play around and bathe. In this case, this dove here uh, got into the water quite a bit. I also made a snowman and put food on the snowman head and had the birds sitting on the snowman. In these photos, I found a really cool log down by the river, put it right next to my set, and some of the birds would come in and sit on the really neat log. It's also good to have some bushes and trees near your set. In this case, the cardinals would sit on the ice-covered branches and snow-covered grass. So with hummingbirds, the idea is the same. You put some flowers next to your hummingbird feeder, and usually they'll go to the flowers when they come to your feeder. A lot of times I'll put uh, a little bit of sugar water on the flowers just to make sure that the hummingbirds visit the flower when they come into the feeder. With hummingbirds, you have to use really fast shutter speeds and sometimes even uh, flashes to stop those wings. So that's about it. Hopefully uh, this video will give you um, enough to go out and make some really good bird pictures. The idea is to get creative and try different things and see what you can come up with.